So I've been wanting to take the SIE exam for a while now. I had a spur of the moment idea that I could sort of document the process of studying for the exam and seeing if I can pass it or not. I thought it might be helpful for some of you who are considering a career in the finance industry. So if you're not familiar, SIE stands for Securities Industry Essentials, and it's essentially a stepping stone or prerequisite before applying to firms. It can show recruiters that you're motivated and serious about the financial industry and that you've taken ed ed your education into your own hands. It can also help persuade um, firms to sponsor you for additional FINRA um, exams. I'm not sure yet if I'll pursue the additional exams, but I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So um, before I start studying, I thought it might be fun to take a practice test and get an idea of how much I already know. If I had to guess, I'm thinking I'll get like a 60%, anything less than that. I feel like I might be a little embarrassed because I've been trading stocks for five years and I have my own finance YouTube channel. But you know, with that said, I don't think that you really need to know the majority of what's in the SIE exam to be a successful trader. So I don't know, we'll see. So with that said, let's get into the practice test. For the purposes of this video, I went ahead and created a practice quiz. We're gonna be randomizing 25 questions from all of the quiz material here, and we'll get feedback on every question. And this is some test taking stuff. Okay, so let's get started here with question one. The economic theory, which believes that the US government should remain relatively inactive and the economy will grow by itself is called uh, a Canadian supply side monetarist or none of the above. No idea. I guess none of the above. Let's see what it says. <laughs> of course, it is supply side is also known as Reaganomics. It's a theory that the government should stay out of the way as much as possible. Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. Okay. Question two. Mrs. Johnson owns 10 ABC August 30 call options. ABC has just announced a dividend to shareholders of record. On the ex-dividend date, what, if anything, will happen to Mrs. Johnson's call options? A. The exercise price will be reduced to reflect the dividend. The exercise price will remain the same. The exercise price will be increased to reflect the dividend. Oh gosh, it's either exercise price. I want to say the exercise price will remain the same, but I could be wrong. Let's see. Oh. A. The, that, that would have been my second guess. Uh, so the exercise price will be reduced to reflect the dividend. Okay. All right. So question three. All of the following are true regarding limited partners except they have access to unlimited financial information regarding the partnership. B. They may participate in management decisions since they have a tremendous amount of risk. C. They may vote to terminate a partnership. Or D. They may invest in competing partnerships. Let me think about this one for a second. See, this is the thing. I don't know much about limited partners. That'd be LPs. Okay. I want to say it's C. They may vote to terminate a partnership. But no, it would be limited partners may not participate in management decisions. Oh, it was which of the following is true except. Okay. That was on me. I didn't read the question clearly. But anyway, the answer is limited partners may not participate in management decisions. That is the responsibility of the general partners. Okay. I really don't trade a lot of LPs. I think I did one video on an LP so far, um, which was NGL. But anyway, all right, next question. Four, who is responsible for maintaining a fair and orderly market on an exchange? Uh, option A, a DMM. Option B, $2 brokers. C, floor brokers, or all of the above. I've never even heard of a $2 broker. I don't know what a DMM is. I'm just gonna say all of the above. That seems like a safe answer. Oh my gosh. A, designated market makers, formerly specialists. If they hadn't abbreviated it, I probably would have clicked that. Okay, next one. Question five, regulation T is set by the FRB, FINRA, SEC, securities exchanges. I don't even know what regulation T is. Um, FRB, FINRA, let's just go with SEC. Let's see what it says. 
So Federal Reserve Boards. Regulation T is the Federal Reserve Boards rule that covers the credit that broker dealers may extend to customers in margin or cash accounts. Accounts. Okay. Well, got that wrong. So far, we're doing terrible on this test. This is kind of embarrassing. All right, so which of the following is included in a preliminary prospectus? The purpose for the funds being raised, financial statements, a written statement in red stating that the prospectus may be amended and a final prospectus issued, or the last one is the final offer price. Which of the following is included in a preliminary prospectus? Oh, wow. I feel like it's one, two, and three. Let's try that. Yes, we got one right. Okay. Seven, if Buddy Siegel has a limited amount of funds and wants to invest in the pharmaceutical industry, but does not want to limit his investments to only one or two companies, which type of fund would be, be, would be most suitable? A hedge fund, a sector fund, a balanced fund, or a money market fund? Okay, so this is the most suitable. Well, we wouldn't choose a sector fund, I don't think. He wants to invest in the pharmaceutical industry, but he doesn't want to limit to only one or two companies. I don't think it would be a money market fund. I don't think it would be a balanced fund. And I don't believe it would be a hedge fund. I'm gonna go with B. Yes, perfect. A specialized or sector fund invests a minimum of 25% of its assets into a particular region or industry and would be the most suitable for Buddy. Eight, place the economic cycle in order. Expansion, trough, peak, and contraction. I feel like I should know this one. Expansion, peak, contraction, trough. So expansion should be first, peak should be next, one, three, trough should be last. So expansion, peak. I think it's this one. Expansion, peak, contraction, and trough. So it goes up, peak, tracks, trough. I swear if this isn't right, I'm gonna be mad. Okay, good. <laughs> Perfect, we got that one right. All of the following items would be found on the official statement of a municipal bond issue except... Okay, I don't trade bonds, so this is gonna be difficult. All of the following items would be found on the official statement of a municipal bond issue except... I will say a legal opinion. I feel like that shouldn't be on there. Oh, not wrong. I mean, not right. Okay, so the official statement for a municipal bond issue is similar to a prospectus for a corporate issue. Okay, yada yada yada. All right, we got that wrong. That doesn't surprise me though. 10. All of the following are exam examined by a fundamental analyst except. Okay, we have to get this right. Fundamental analyst except. Industry timing, balance sheets, earnings per share. Well, it's gotta be timing, right? Yeah, because, you know, fundamentals is more about the underlying company versus how long it will take the stock to see. Yes, you got it right. Perfect. Technical analysts are more concerned with timing. Okay, which of the following actions may the FRB take to ease the money supply? Increase reserve requirements, lower reserve requirements, raise the discount rate, or lower the discount rate. So we want to ease the money supply. We definitely want to raise the discount rate, right? So we're down to, I'm gonna say one and three. Ooh, you're wrong. Um, if the Federal Reserve Board is trying to ease the money supply, it could lower the reserve requirements, the percentage of deposit banks must keep on hand, or lower the discount rate to the rate that the FRB charges member banks for loans. Okay, so we basically got the exact opposite of what I thought the answer was. Okay, question 12. Which of the following types of funds trades on an exchange and would be an ideal investment during a bearish market? An ideal investment during a bearish market. Oh, should be, should be inverse ETFs. Correct. Okay, we got that one. I mean, I should know that. Okay, all of the following are examples of retail communications except Okay, except testimonials, market letters, red herrings, or form letters. No idea! I'm gonna go with C because once again we're guessing on this. Oh, just happened to be right. Um, testimonials, market letters, and form letters are all examples of retail communications. A red herring is also a preliminary prospectus put out by the issuer of a new security priority prior to a public offering. I didn't even know what that was, so wow. All right, 
Question 14. Which of the following are factors that affect the marketability of municipal gold, bond, gold bonds? Once again, I, do, I don't know what municipal go bonds are. Government something bond. I don't know. All right. The quality, call features, issues, name, credit enhancements. Can we just say all of them? Okay, cool. We got that right. All right. Which of the fall or which is a question 15. What is the required beginning date RBD for traditional IRAs? Oh, 59 and a half, isn't it? The year after the investor reaches the age of 59 and a half. Wow. Okay, as of January 1st, 2020, withdrawals must begin by April 1st of the year after the investor turns 72. It was previously 70 and a half. At that point, the investor has to take the required minimum distribution, which can be determined by looking at the IRS required minimum distribution worksheet. Okay, see, I didn't really know what that meant. So it's essentially what is the uh, latest you can wait before you start withdrawing from your IRA, is what it sounded like. Okay, good to know. I didn't know there was a minimum on that. Which, uh, or max, I should say. All right, now question 16. Which of the following associated persons are exempt from FINRA registration? Persons whose functions are solely clerical or ministerial? Persons whose function is solely and exclusively involved in transactions of commodities. Persons whose function is solely and exclusively involved in transactions of municipal securities or D, all of the above. Clerical. Persons whose function is solely and exclusively involved in transactions of municipal securities. I'm gonna go with A, because I feel like you should still register under these two things, and I don't think it's all of the above, but let's see how we do. Ooh, it was D, all of the above. Nice. Question 17. Who is the issuer and grantor, guarantor of all listed options? The OCC, the OAA, the OD, or the CBOE? I thought it was the OCC. I... Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Once again, I should definitely know the answer to that question. So the Options Clearing Corporation is the issuer and, I cannot say this word, guarantor, guarantor. Anyway, I'm just going to move on. Don't hate me for butchering that word. All right, question 18. Regulation SP outlines rules relating to, no idea, A, trade confirmations, B, the delivery of securities, C, settlement and payment dates, D, safeguarding of customer information. No idea. I'm gonna, you know what? We got SP here. Let's do settlement and payment dates and see if that's right. Oh, it was wrong. The answer is D, safeguarding of customer information. Well, all right, so the required minimum distributions, RMDs, from a traditional IRA must begin by, hey, didn't we get this question? April 1st of the year after the investor turns age 72 or April 15th of the year after the investor turns age 72. Let's go with April like 15th. The government seems to like that date, so let's try it. No, oh my gosh. As of January 1st, 2020, investors must begin withdrawing from most retirement plans by April 1st after the investors turn age 72. We should have got this because this was a duplicate question. Okay, anyway, moving on. 20, when is the last time an investor may trade a listed option? 11.59 p.m. Eastern on the third Friday of the expiration month, 10.59 p.m. Eastern on the Saturday after the third Friday of the expiration month, 5.30 p.m. Eastern on the third Friday of the expiration month, and 4 p.m. Eastern on the third Friday of the expiration month. Uh, I don't think you can make trades on Saturdays. Yeah, I do not think you can make trades. So let's go with 4 p.m. Eastern. Yes, okay, perfect. If I got this question wrong, I would have been upset. Okay, 21, when comparing qualified retirement plans to non-qualified retirement plans, which of the two, which of the following two are true? Contributions to qualified plans are tax deductible. That's true. Contributions to non-qualified plans are tax deductible. Wait a minute. All withdrawals from qualified plans are taxed. All withdrawals from non-qualified plans are taxed. Oh, jeez. Honestly, I don't know the difference between qualified and non-qualified. So let's just be consistent here and choose one and three. See if that's right. Yes. Okay. Qualified plans are the ones that meet IRS code in order to be tax deductible. All right, so that was a little bit of a test taking strategy skill we just did there, narrowing down our options and selecting the best one. All right, question 22, accredited investors include investors with 
Okay, I think I know this one. It's a, let's see, we have option one, a net worth of $1 million excluding primary residence, a net worth of $1 million including primary residence, an annual income of 200,000 or more for the previous two years and expected to make at least 200,000 this year, an annual income of 300,000 or more for the previous three years and expected to make at least 300,000 this year. Okay, this one's tough because I've always thought it was just option one. So we have option one or three or option one and four. Let's say one and four, but it might be one and three. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it was one and three. Accredited investors are the ones with a net worth of at least $1 million, excluding any equity they may have in their primary residence. And they also have to, uh, let's see, one and three have an annual income of 200,000 or more for the previous two years and are expected to make at least 200,000 this year. Okay, that was a lucky guess. All right, all of the following are money market instruments except ADRs, CDs, T-bills, and art repos. I'm gonna go with D, because I'm not even sure what that is. Uh, so the answer was A, ADRs. ADRs are not money market instruments. Okay. An investor who is long a call option will realize a profit if exercising the option when the underlying stock price is... Okay, let me go over this one again. An investor who is long a call option will realize a profit if exercising the underlying stock price. So it would be above the call option, above the strike price, plus the premium paid. Yeah, so it's C. Yep. Okay. 25. One of your customers would like to purchase preferred stock that would help him reduce inflation risk. Which of the following types of preferred stock would you recommend? Participating, convertible, cumulative, or non-cumulative? Reduce inflation risk. Well, the only one I've ever heard of is convertible, so I'm just going to click that see what happens. Oh, we were right. So typically common stock keeps place with inflation more than preferred stock. Convertible preferred stock is convertible into common stock of the same issue. Okay. All right, so now we're on, this was our last question. So let's see how we did. Probably terrible. Okay, complete review. So does it give you like a score? We got so many of these wrong. It doesn't give you like a score. Oh, that is so, oh wait, total score. 12 out of 25. So that means we got, close to 50. 12 by 25. 12 divided by 25. Ooh, we got a glorious 48%. So I definitely did much worse than I thought I was going to do. This test has certainly humbled me quite a bit. Uh, let me know in the comments how you guys did and um, or if you want me to take another test like this again.